should be your live. What's going on, guys? You guys ready to tie one on with post fly again for round two of our uh, weekly tying meetup? Tonight we'll be tying the double bunny, one of uh, one of my favorite streamers for pretty much any predatory fish: trout, warm water, bass, pickerel, pike, and everything in between. Um, so yeah, we'll give it a few uh, more seconds before we get started. Let a few more people join in. Anybody got some good plans for this weekend in their uh, weekend fishing? Hey, Brian. What's up, Brian? So, tonight we'll start off with putting the hook in the vise, catching it in the corner. Once you got it set up, we'll start our thread base. Bringing it back about a quarter of the way. Trim off the tag end. Grab your eyes, which I already misplaced. Oh, there we go. All right, now that's probably the most tricky part of the fly, but it's not that difficult. Take your flies, pinch them, hold them parallel with the shank, make a couple loose thread wraps, and then pull it tight, allowing them to kick off to the side. I know it's kind of difficult to see that part. And then cross over the top of them a couple times and then cross back over the opposite direction. And now we're gonna start our figure eights going over the top of the eyes and then under the shank. All right. And now we're gonna go over the shank, but under the eyes and that kind of pulls all the thread together and tightens everything up and locks them in place. All right. Now you grab your flashaboo. Yeah, you can use whichever, match up the colors to whichever uh, fly you're using. If you're doing the orange and chartreuse, then you can go with the chartreuse thread. If you're doing olive and white, you can go with the olive thread. Take your flashaboo, stick it right behind the eyes and tie it in. And you're gonna tie it all the way back to the bend. Once you hit that point, you can advance your thread back up behind the eyes. Take a sip of your drink. And now we're gonna make connecting thread wraps with your flashaboo heading back up to your thread. Now it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just for when the two um, pieces of rabbit strip, they peek apart, it gives you some lateral line down the fly. All right, now you reach that point, you can tie it in. Trim that tag end off. All right. Now you can bring your thread in front of the eyes. All right, now you take your olive rabbit strip and you measure out the length you want. So standard rule is the shank length. All right, so I know I wanna poke it right about there onto the point of the hook. Stab it on. Now you can remove it from the vise. And then you're gonna slide it up over the bend. Just like that. And you can put it back inside the vise. Slide it out of the way. Line it back up parallel with the uh, shank. Now we're gonna tie it in. 
Now to keep your head of your fly from getting bulked up with material and thread, wet your fingertips with saliva or water, and then you're gonna separate the fur where you're gonna tie it in. So Pete, where are we thinking about fishing this weekend? That was a good question. Possible Alby City, northern New Hampshire up against the Canadian border. We're conflicting Maybe. on this decision right here. Yeah, we're all, <laughs> it's that time of the week. We all, <laughs> all we think about is uh, what the making next... sure we get all of our work done by the end of the day and then where we're heading to yep. on Friday. All right, after making a couple thread wraps, lock that in place. You can spin it up, trim that tag end. Now you want to cut at an angle and as close to the thread wraps as possible. So I've seen this fly used down in, when I was fishing in Montana, and we used it in a tandem nymph rig. We had the double bunny above a San Juan worm, and uh, yeah, it was electric. I All believe white it. one. All white. And this, this pattern is also, uh, especially the olive over white, is especially effective and eerie for their steelhead. Yep. Uh, there's a lot of emerald shiners in those in those waters, and uh, man, those steelhead can't keep their mouths off of anything that's white or white and olive. Yep, it's fantastic. So I like I like using this fly. Like, don't think of it as just a streamer. Like, use it as a dead drifted nymph. Yep. Or good book on streamer fishing is called Dynamic Nymphing. Or yeah, no, streamer tactics. Um, it's in the same series as Dynamic Nymphing, and they go over. A ton of streamer tactics that people just don't think about. Is that the, no, that's not. Is that Dan? Um, it was the same series, but I think it was a different George writer. George Daniels, I believe. I think so. George Daniel, yeah, he's a good. Yeah, it's a really great good book. Dude. He, that is a book that everybody who nymph fishes should yes. read. Anything George Daniels ever published, I mean, it'll take your nymphing game from zero to a hundred oh, yeah. real quick. That is, he's one of the fishiest people I've ever met. Yep. All right, so we're gonna do the white rabbit strip now. So you want the more or less leather part to line up with the olive one. So line it up, and then we're gonna do the same thing as before where we separated the fur. So I just kind of grab it, pull it away, wet my fingers again, get a good Separation, a good tie-in point. Make sure your thread is tight against the eyes. All right. I'll make a couple wraps that are kind of loose. Orientate that rabbit strip where I want it and then cinch it down. Pete, what's your favorite time of year for fish and streamers? Starting right now. Yeah. As soon as the leaves start to change colors, start thinking about streamer fishing. Those browns get a little, they start getting a little yep. aggressive. And now everything, fish's colors start matching the fall foliage. Everything's getting more vibrant. This is the best time of the year. Yep. Truly magical. One of my, even these storms, I know my, my favorite river back home in uh, Pennsylvania was, as soon as that river started coming up, yeah, it was on. Yep. Like that, that, that first, if you can catch that wave thrown, right when it turns to chocolate milk and those browns start getting aggressive, it's electric. Yeah, it's boom, Special boom. Special time of year. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so next we're gonna apply the glue that's gonna hold the two rabbit strips together. 
Now I like to use a gel base because I found the liquid gets absorbed down into um, the rabbit strip itself and it doesn't have quite the same hold and the same bond. Um, so I apply a thin layer. All right. So you're doing like one stripe or? Yep, one stripe. I try to make it so it's flat on it. Put a little bit more around the shank. Just to make sure it holds yep. that. And then, and then up over the threads on the eyes. That way it kind of sucks everything down in. All right, starting at the eyes, you're gonna work pushing everything down. Try your hardest not to get super glue on your fingers because you're just gonna have a horrible time. All right, kind of hold it together, get everything cured and stuck together nicely. All right. Trim up if you need to. All right. Finish that off yep. with a nice uh, thread head. Throw a whip finish in. This point, you can put some UV cure up over that, uh, those thread base there. Well, no, thread wraps on the head. And that just makes it, you know, stronger and it keeps it so your uh, fly will last a lot longer with the, whether it's browns or bass eating it, just gives it a little bit more longevity. And, um, yeah, this is a killer pattern. You can dead drift it like Dan said, fish it like a normal streamer across. You could swing it. Um, this time of year, one of my favorite presentations is a straight up stream um, presentation where you're just stripping in enough to feel if you get any takes. And I find that to be a, a killer presentation. Yep. Yeah. All right, Pete, let's do another one. But yeah. real quick before that, um... Let's talk about the uh, the discount for people who are tuned into this. Yes, yes, which I forgot the code. It is tie with post fly yep. and ten all caps. It's going into the comments. You'll see real quick. But basically, it's it's ten percent off of all tying materials and tying kits um, that we offer through post fly. So it's a great way to, you know, save, pick up one for for next time, learn a new pattern. Maybe you need to update your scissor game. Maybe those, uh, Which those I did Walmart today. scissors are not uh, not cutting it. No pun intended. <laughs> I like the pun. Totally intended. So, Pete, that looks really good. Mm. What is that one? This one is the Cucumber Sour by 10 Barrel. 10 Barrel. We picked some up earlier today from our uh, local guy. He also does, what's the other one that you're drinking? The Raspberry Sour? Yeah, I've got this, uh, the Raspberry Sour Crush, and it is, uh, it is crushable, as you can tell by the quarter of it that's left in the bottom of yep. it. Yep. I think the one was intended. <laughs> Very intended. All right, so we're going to start round two with uh, the double bunny. Again, start your thread base, go a quarter to a third down the shank, stop, and then bring it back up to where the center of the eyes would be. All right. Take your eyes, hold them parallel with the shank. Make a couple loose wraps. Then pull it tight, allowing them to kick off to the side. Make a couple wraps going across them in one direction and then in the other. And that kind of just holds them in place while you start your figure eights. Going up over the edge and then under the shank to the opposite side. After you've done that a few times, we're gonna go now and lock all those threads in and pull them tight by going over the top of the shank, but under the eyes. And you want some moderate pressure when you're putting this on to kind of pull everything together. Again, we're gonna grab our flash boom. Hold 
Hold them up against the back of the eyes. And we're gonna tie them in, working back towards the bend of the hook. Then we're gonna advance the thread back up behind the eyes. And we're gonna start making their connecting wraps up the shank. Oh, I'm dreaming of fishing this weekend. Oh man, dude, they've been, they've been haunting. Being able to sneak off on Friday and catch at least a pickerel was the highlight of my last weekend. That pickerel was a tank though. Oh yeah. Chunky. Toothy critters. And it was on a double bunny. Hell yeah. I didn't even put that together until just now. <laughs> All right. So I tied in the flashaboo. I cut the tag end. And like I said, you don't have to worry about the flashaboo looking perfect because it's gonna be hidden mostly by the uh, rabbit strips. All right, so we're gonna measure out how long we want a tail on this guy. So we're gonna go there, and we're gonna take it and we're gonna poke it on to the point of the hook. You wanna stab it all the way through so the hook point's sticking out. At this point, we're gonna pull the hook off the vise, and we're gonna push that uh, rabbit strip all the way on over the bend. Slide it back down into the vise. We got too many Todd. Todd Nelson and Todd Davis. What's up, boys? But there's nobody like Todd Nelson. That's what I've heard. Word on the street. Local Goffstown guy. <laughs> All right. So once you get it back in the vise, rabbit strip running parallel with the shank again. We're going to see where we're going to tie it in, and we're going to wet our fingers, and then we're going to separate the fur. Just like that, and tie her in, make a couple loose wraps, orientate the rabbit strip the way you like it. Now you can tighten it up, make a couple more locking wraps. And I like to flip it when I cut it, just so I don't accidentally hit the thread. We're gonna cut as tight to the thread as we can. Roll it back down. All right. Now we'll grab our rabbit, white rabbit strip. The word rabbit is escaping me tonight. My, my cold from last week is still there. All right. Yeah, that went. Going on over two weeks of sickness. Still gonna send it though. Still gonna send it. All right, so just like before, we're gonna match the hides up to figure out where our tie-in point is and where we're gonna separate the fur. All right, so there, right there, stays good. Wet your fingers and separate it. Try to bring that thread as close to the eyes as I can. All right, make a loose wrap and kind of cinch it up. Make sure everything is in place. A couple more wraps before you trim the tag end off. <coughs> All right, and again, you want to get as close to the threads as you can. All right, now we're gonna build that head up. Try to cover up those cut ends as much as possible while trying to keep it look semi-neat. Crystal's up in here throwing around some referrals. Thanks for tuning in, Crystal. Yeah. Now, last time I did the opposite. I glued and then whip finished. Honestly, 
at whichever point you want to do it, you can. There's no right or wrong way in this part of the tie. All right. Now we're gonna do the glue again. So flop the white rabbit strip out of the way. Share the tip of the gel super glue you're using, whether it's a zap glue or any other gel based super glue. Works perfect. All right. Now we're gonna do a real thin layer. It's kind of oozing, but. And I kind of use the tip to spread it out over the uh, entirety of the rabbit strip. Kind of bulk it up a little bit more around the hook and make sure you hit the threads of the eyes. Hmm? Bigger hook? Is it bigger hook? Bigger hook? For that one. Mm -mm. Okay. All right, and now we're gonna start pushing it in from the top of the eyes, working back towards the tail. Trying to not get it on your fingers. All right, now hold everything down and let it cure. And at this point, if you got a head cement or UV cure, you can hit those threads, just add some durability to the fly and you're ready to strip that some brown trout. Yeah. All right. You ready to do your I'm remix time? Perfect. All right, guys, it was a fun time with you. Dan's gonna do uh, a little change up on this fly, add his own special touch. Have a good night. Woo. What's up, what's up, what's up? All right, so this pattern, uh, real quick, is just a super simple, like, sculpin or a leech. Um, little imitation. You can tie it in really any color zonker that you have. Um, it's just, it's so simple. And all, all you need is the materials you have in this kit. So you've got your flashaboo and your zonkers. Where's another little olive guy? We'll do this one first. So similar to the start of the last pattern, all we're going to do is you know, take the hook, get that centered in the, uh, in the vise there, you know, get your, I'm using the olive thread on the half of the bobbin you got there. So I'm just going to wrap it back and you're going to want to leave a a hair more space than Pete did on the last tie. Just, you'll, you'll see why we're going to do that. It's just going to bulk up the head for the sculpin because they've got really wide like if you've seen their profile it starts off real fat and then comes down to a really tight taper um, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna once you get that in we're gonna start and we're gonna take I'm gonna use the yellow eyes just just for a little switch up on this guy so same thing as Pete said you want to lay it on I like to put it parallel with the with the hook do one two three and like Pete said, let it come akimbo, par or perpendicular to the uh, to the shank. And then I'm gonna do, you know, the usual as you're attaching these dumbbell eyes, the figure eight, over and back, over and back, making sure it's nice and lined up. Um, I'm a little nitpicky with this sort of stuff, and uh, I like to have my eyes really set up. So I'm gonna look down over the top of the shank to make sure they're perpendicular, adding wraps to pull it the direction I want. And then I like to do a couple, I call them halos, but I go around the eyes like four, four times and just pull it tight a little bit. And really what that does is it locks in that, that positioning. And then I'm just gonna wrap back to about where the, about the, right about there, right where that hook point starts to bend back. And all I'm gonna do here is do a couple little wraps there and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take one strip of the flasher boon. We're gonna, we're gonna make this a nice little, fun little couple strips here, but we're just gonna double it over twice. So double it over, trim it, take it, 
I'm gonna double it over again. This is just gonna add a little bit of life to that back end of that fly. And yeah, it's a little short, so we're gonna go like this. And this is a little trick I learned from one of my, my fly tying mentors. You take that, and what you do is you just take it and double it around, around your thread like this. And then as you, it just makes it easier to control as you're tying it in. So now it's nice and even, you see that, and it's trapped. So it's gonna spray out like that. I'm just gonna give it one, two, three, a couple little trapping wraps just to you know get that little flash tail going. I love that you're teaching everybody and me. I've never seen this one before, this exact variation. Yeah, so what I'm gonna do is you know just measure out that zonker strip to about, it does, you really just want the fibers to go to the end of that tail. So right about there, similar to like what Pete said, separate separate the hairs on the zonker like that. So there's a nice little taco there. And I'm gonna, this one's not gonna cooperate, but go like one, ah, come on babe, there you go. Get that in there, make sure that's sitting, sitting pretty right up top. We're gonna tighten that down, one, two all right and we're gonna leave that there and what we're gonna do right now is once that's trapped there what i'm gonna do is just take this i'm gonna maybe give it one or two more wraps just to make sure it doesn't move there we go and what i'm gonna do is just kind of take this make sure that's sat up on top and i'm just gonna palm her in one wrap here and then what i'm gonna do it's gonna cooperate, these zonkers are thick. I'm just gonna kinda of give it, this gives it a little bit of bulk around the eyes. Just give that a nice, nice trapping wrap. Then I'm gonna move my thread forward. This looks really ugly right now, but I promise as you, all you're gonna do is do that same palmering. So you're just pushing it back as you go forward. And we're gonna do like that, and then it, it's not really cooperating. But what we're gonna do is wrap it once more. Here, get it up around that hook eye, and then I'm just gonna take two wraps. Like I said, this is not the prettiest pattern, but I promise you it does work very well. So I'm gonna get a couple wraps in there. I'm gonna trim off my excess in front of the hook eye there and cut my thread at the same time. Happens to the best of us. All the time. All the time. All because the time. Especially when you're dealing with these bulky materials, just try to be careful. They blend in very well. Happens to the best of us. You're getting this raw, alive, uncut. None of that fanciness. So because that broke, really when, when, you, when you break a thread, all you really need to do is go in Find where that thread was and throw in a couple more wraps. And that will do the best to lock down that. But this does look ugly, but as you can see, you're gonna get the eyes peeking through. And really all this is supposed to look like is a sculpin with a really big forehead. And it's, I, I don't know what I call it. It's just a Palmer sculpin. Um, we'll get the pr we'll get a prettier tie next time. These uh, I I prefer to use uh, micro zonkers when I'm doing these. Um, they just they get a little bit less of that flesh. But I'm just gonna build up a nice little thread head right here. We'll just ignore this ugly little lump here. He's uh we'll call him the redheaded stepchild of this tie. But as you can see in the water, it's just gonna look like a tiny little sculpin. The big fat head and a short little tail skittering about. And you can tie this in just about every color. All it takes is one, one zonker strip and some flash. You can crush, you can just play around with it. Um, palmering is a great technique for making your, your materials last a bit longer. But what we're going to do on this next one is I'm going to move the, the dumbbell eyes a little bit farther forward. And we're just going to tie in everything behind those eyes. Um, 
and like I said, and I think the biggest thing to take away is as you're learning, and I learn every day as I tie, um, I'm sure Pete will tell you the exact same thing. I would honestly probably not be fly fishing or fly tying if I wasn't learning because I would instantly be bored. I have a short attention yep. span. So this is a nice little, um, do you want to go take that cup and fill it up and I can show them what yep. the taper looks like? So what we're going to do real quick is get a little bit of water on these, on these patterns and show you what that taper turns out to. And uh, yeah, that's enough. So what I'm going to do, we've got a little water here, get that fly nice and wet. And you know, with zonkers, it takes a little bit. Just swirl it around in there. And really, <laughs> like I said, it's not gonna be pretty, but trout don't eat pretty. And so when it's in the water, it's gonna, let me get this camera to focus right. It's gonna look like that. And it's just gonna be a little dart scooting across the bottom and I beg you to find a, a brown trout that's not gonna try and put that thing in its mouth. You know, it's just this little, stiff, little missile that's designed to get eaten by trout. So we're gonna do another one of these, a little bit cleaner, a little prettier. But again, fish don't eat pretty. Fish eat the wounded, especially mm -hmm. trout. They're going after the wounded fish. They're going after the dying fish. Uh, they don't have the energy to go chase down a perfectly healthy, picture-perfect minnow. So even if your ties are, you think they don't look great, fish them first. Because I, I, some of my best patterns that have been super productive have been the ones that I've left the vice going, ah, I don't know if that turned out well. But remarkably, some of those have resulted in the biggest fish. Well, you gotta think, no human, no two human, well, you got... Twins. Twins, all right, there's always the exception of twins, but no two humans are the same, all right? No two bugs are the same, no two fish are the same. There's always variations in people, variations in bugs, um, wounds in them, nothing looks the same. Region, yep, region exactly. plays a big thing in yep. what you're, so it's really, don't get too hung up on the details. Too hung up on the details because really all that's gonna result in is you not enjoying your time at the vice and it's not gonna have any impact yeah. on your fishing. When I first Hey, what's up Mark Farron? When I first Palm started. Beach dad on, uh, on uh, Instagram, he's a great guy. Yeah. First time, when I first started tying, I had a... Ooh, this one's thinner, I like that. I used to take all my quote unquote defect or messed up flies and I didn't throw them away, I just put them in a bin and I kept putting them in the bin and I just wouldn't fish them. And then as the progression of, you know, uh, fly fishermen or women goes, you know, you start to care less about, you know, it being picture perfect. And I started fishing some of these quote unquote defect flies and it turned out some of them were the most producing flies, you know, yep. and it turned me to start tying with slight defects or slight different things on them than I normally would. So like I said, I'm putting this, this dumbbell up a little bit higher and really there's not gonna be much material in front of this. All I'm gonna take for, at the end of the fly, you'll see, I'm just gonna take a little scrap of zonker and we're gonna cover up those eyes. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be an all white fly with an olive head. So after getting those eyes nice and secure, I'm gonna again, wrap all the way back to about the bend. And all we're gonna do again is, you know, take that strip of flashaboo. And this, the flashaboo, I, I regretted to mention this in the first one, uh, it adds a stiffness to the tail and really helps retain, retain that, that uh, teardrop profile that you want in your bait fish. Um, and the nice thing is about the zonkers and stuff, the more you force them to interact with the water, the better they're gonna be for pushing water and really getting, especially in like higher water, trout hunt, and a lot of fish hunt, when they can't see, they rely on that sense of feel that they have through their, their lateral, lateral line. Um, that's why you see a lot of patterns with like big bulky bucktail. So again, I'm just gonna stick that, make sure that's nice and secure because that's gonna get chewed on the most. Um, if you wanted to get fancy with it, I'd recommend putting a little stinger hook out the back, but that's a, a conversation for another day. 
So I'm gonna do, we're gonna do a little longer tail on this guy here. You know, again, measuring that zonker out so the tips of the fibers just hit the end of that flashaboo. And I'm gonna give it one, two, three, four, give it a couple tugs, nice little trap and wraps. And then we're gonna move, we're gonna move our thread all the way up to that, the back of the eyes there. And what I'm gonna do is, again, like last week I talked about, I prefer to counter wrap when I'm palmering or putting any other materials in. Um, again, it just increases the durability of that. But So I'm gonna keep wrapping this around the shank. And as I go, you'll see my hands, I'm pushing these fibers back, I'm laying them back down. I'm forcing them to essentially build this little profile. So keep palmering. It's called palmering. If you hear any other fancy people talk about it, I like to call it wrapping. You could probably try the wet trick too if you want a little extra hand to yep. be first out trying out the palmering idea. Yep. So you're gonna, like I said, we're gonna wrap this right up to the end of that shank. And all I'm gonna do, again, I'm gonna push back that little excess there. Just enough to make sure that material doesn't move. And as you can see, you know, it's kind of got this, this bulky mid body here tapering out to a nice tail. So then we're gonna do this and we're gonna move our, our thread up to the top here. And what I'm gonna do is because this is gonna ride hook point up, I'm gonna flip it over in my vise. So now everything, you know, the lead eyes are down. This is how it's going to be when it's sitting, when it's being fished in the water. So I'm gonna take this little Actually, we're gonna do all white. So I got this little, little tiny scrap. Don't throw your scraps away. Mm. They can help. So really what all this scrap is gonna do is just cover up that little gap there. And like I said, these are super quick ties. So don't be afraid if, you know, if, if as you're fishing it or whatever, some stuff starts to fall apart. Again, fish don't eat perfect things. So all I'm gonna do is do one trapping wrap and then I'm gonna come down and, and tighten it. So that's gonna lay over the top. And then after, once that's in there, all you're gonna do is just tighten down these, this thread head, build that head, make sure you're leaving enough space around the, uh, the hook eye there. Give it a couple more tight wraps, really wanna make sure that doesn't move. And then I'm just gonna one, two, three, maybe four for good measure, pull that back. But bam, now you've got this handy dandy little white sculpin. And again, most fish, like I said, we're look, they're looking for dead stuff too. So the cool thing about this pattern is all white to a fish it means dead. So it means number one, dead, but number two, easy meal. That thing's not gonna try and run away from them. So we're gonna get this wet again, get it nice and Get everything to lay down. Now what we're gonna do is just take that. I like to put my flies in the water after I tie them just so I can see what they're gonna look like. And again, they're not the prettiest flies, doesn't matter. So in the water, this guy's gonna look like, like that. And it's just gonna be a nice little white bait fish Get my hand out of the shadow there. There we go. Nice little white bait fish. Now this has also been a perfect key for catching, uh, put it on a little bigger salt saltwater hook and you got yourself an albi fly. Mm. Put it on a little wider gap B10S, B10S stinger hook from Gamakatsu. You got yourself a killer winter bass pattern. Yep. You can fish these, like I said, dead drifted, drop it, jig it. Um, I fished it tight line nymphing um, with our, like our 10 foot, our nymphster stick from Wade Rods. Um, as it's going through and as I'm doing my, uh, as I'm feeding it through the, through the riffle, what I'll do is just kind of really quick tick, 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 make it look like a bait fish hitting rocks and it's dying, it's sick or whatever, it's just reacting, but it's not really moving much. Um, and that's really how you can entice a, a really aggressive eat as a fish is just gonna see this bouncing along the bottom. Go, wow, easy meal, smack, fish on. So those are our, our, our basic remix patterns 
um, for this for this week's tying thing. Like I said, zonker strips are incredibly, incredibly effective and just diverse materials. You can take you can shave them and trim the take the trimmings and create a dubbing loop, which we showed you in last week's video, and. You can also take them, make really cool mouse patterns. Yep. Um, don't don't sleep on using them to wrap the shank because that is a great way to build up some bulk. Um, rabbit is a thicker material; it's got a little bit more uh, bulk to it, yep. um, so the fish are going to be a little bit and more enticed to eat it. And it breathes. And it breathes, so it, it's constantly moving. Mm. Even if it's like not, even if your your rig, say you're under an indicator, it doesn't look like anything's moving. In that water column, that thing is waving, making motion, being real, real smooth. Yep. And that can in, oftentimes entice a bite just by itself. Like, I, I mean, I, half the time when I'm sitting in a, in a pool uh, fishing for trout and some slack water behind a nice, like, uh, where Riffle dumps in, stick that in the little eddy and just jig it and just wait till something munches. And that's, that's yeah. the... Uh, and the best part about it, too, is it's unbelievably durable. You know, mm -hmm. the hide on it, it's going to hold up to so much abuse. I mean, I feel like the hook will rust out, your thread wraps will break. I mean, rabbit strip is going to hold up to an extreme amount of abuse yep. from fish. So it's a perfect material for fall streamer fishing, for saltwater fishing. It's just, it can be used in so many different applications. Yeah, I mean, I tied up a version of this on a 2 watt hook. Like, I mean, same thing, just no eyes, same exact thing, took it out, started hooking up on Albies south of the Cape. Uh, like I said, steelhead, steelhead love, especially in the Erie Tribs, um, they love, 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 love a white streamer. Um, another great quick little pattern, ah, we'll do it, why not? This one is called White Death. And it is one of my go-to. It's an unweighted streamer. We're going to use one more of these white strips here. Um, yeah, we'll use all. So what I'm going to do is start my thread up at the head. I'll work it all the way back to the end of the shank. Trim off that extra thread. And again, gonna put in a little, again, just doubling over that flashaboo. It's a little long, so we went about half that. So I'm gonna cut them into two strips. Again, using this little handy dandy trick that I think I owe Jake Vilwalk big props for. He showed me how to do it. So you just double it over it, and really it just makes it so much easier to control flash and to handle the material. You can just slide it up and down like, oh, I don't want it there. All right, so I'm gonna take another wrap and pull it around the other way. So we're just gonna do that, make sure that's lined up right on the top there. Ah, she ran away from me. Nice wrap. Oh. Ah, not cooperating. But again, with it looped over like that, it's super easy to recover from little, little mistakes like that. We're just gonna lock that down. And then we're gonna tie in one strip of the, the long, of long flash of and we're gonna use it to wrap like Pete did the, uh, the double bunny. So we're gonna tie the long strand in. Don't get this mixed up with the short strands that are making up the tail. So we're gonna leave that, let that drop. Is there so much as too many Todd's Todd? I don't so know. So many Todd's. A lot of Todd's <laughs> up in here. We are we the, the official? Are we the official fly tying event of Todd's? Yeah, we're the, I think we are at this point. We're now the Todd tribe. Todd tribe. Todd tribe. All right. So again, you're gonna take take that, match that to the length of your flash, using that same method. Either wet hands. Luckily, mine's a little. My hands are a little wet from the uh, condensation on my nice uh, ten barrel beer. So we're gonna get that to the fibers where we want it. I'm just gonna go, whoop, two, three, all right. And that's gonna lay back down real nice. Then all we're gonna do, wrap this all the way up 
to about a hook or about an eye's length back from the eye there. And then I'm gonna take the long flash of boost strip we left. Again, I'm counter wrapping it. Um, you wanna make sure that it's just overlapping the whole way. So you wanna kinda go half over the wrap you just previously made. I'm just gonna wrap. Wrap. This is gonna show that little shiny underbelly that that minnow is gonna have. Gonna wrap, wrap, wrap. Again, I'm counter wrapping. Uh, it's a technique that I learned that I implement pretty much constantly. Um, I just like it. It seems to, my flies seem to last longer. It's a little bit easier to tie them in. We're just wrapping this. We're just wrapping. Let me get these happy wraps. Little Bob Ross up in there. <laughs> And at the end, we're just gonna go up here, right to where our thread was. And again, we're just gonna do one, two, three, four. You will be very surprised how few wraps it actually takes to secure a material. And that's kind of the skill you pick up the more, the longer you tie, but I would say the, the I mean, I started out and my flies were like 75% thread wraps, yep. um, and now they're not. But, and then all to do this, you just bring it over. Find the, the tie-in point on the, the strip. So I'm gonna do mine right about here. Lay that over. One, two, three, four. Just a couple securing wraps. And then all we're gonna do is trim that. And you can change the flash on the inside of this. Some guys like to use sparkle braid. Um, some guys like to use, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Forget what it is, but it's a sparkle braid. Um, I have some on the shelf. Mylar. Yes. Mylar. Yep. Mylar braid. That works really good. With a little bit of rainbow, a little bit more of a chunk to it. You can also tie it with like a um, a white chenille. Yep. Um, like a woolly bugger chenille with a little bit more crunch. Or like the uh, like the cactus chenille yep. we sent out in the latest uh, warm water tying yep. box. That'd be perfect. Um, just give it a little bit of body. Give it a little bit of flash. Make it move in the water. Um, and like I said, all we're doing, rest of this pattern, wrap, 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 makes a nice little thread head, make sure everything's secure. You can also tie this with varying, um, varying thread colors. Uh, the next one I might do, I might do in chartreuse, but it is simple and it is efficient. I didn't believe it the first time I went steel heading. I was like, nah, I'm using nymphs, I'm using eggs, I'm using whatever. And this guy above, above me sitting in the hole, like on a fly rod, every cast, boom, fish, boom, fish, boom, fish. And I walk up to him like, dude, what are you using? And he shows me this, this little white death streamer. And I'm like, no way. That was in my grandfather's box. You know, that, I don't think those streamers work. I don't believe you. Handed me one, next cast, fish. One of my uh, favorite past steelhead flies we did in a box quite a while ago was the, this exact same fly. Mm -hmm. It's just a killer fly. It works for trout, yep. works for bass, Simple. works for everything. But Lake Erie steelhead, love it. Todd, yeah, we have fly tying subscriptions. Yep. What are you talking about? Warm salt and trout. That's yep. where all these kits originated from. All the materials in this kit came from our most recent warm water fly tying kit, which originally was a double bunny, and we're demonstrating some other flies you can tie with the materials inside that kit. Yeah, because we always like to hook you guys up with a little bit extra material for yep. what you're tying. And I mean, in the water, it comes out, and actually that, that flashaboo has a nice little green tint to it. So you get kind of this... See if I can get that to focus on it. Just this really skinny taper of these emerald shiners that are in those Lake Erie tributaries. And really just any sort of minnow that has that olive sheen to it. Um, take this, fish it. Six out of 10, seven out of 10, eight out of 10 steelhead will eat it. Yep. 60% of the time. Yeah, the extra is really cool. Um, part of the reason we're doing, we wanted to do this series was we wanted to show that our kits, um, although they do give you a dozen hooks and everything, we try to give you extra. extra material. So the next kit you can get, you can tie something great with. 
um, get a little bit creative. Uh, and we're gonna be rolling out a, uh, I'll tease it here first, we're gonna be rolling out a little contest for our fly tires. We're gonna see how many different patterns a tire can tie with a single kit. And that can include color variations, pattern variations. Uh, take the hook, tie a nymph. Take the hook, tie a streamer. Um, dry flies are gonna be tough, but there's a ton of variations and we just wanna see what you guys can create. Uh, and the prize is yet to be determined. Um, some have whispered a featured fly in a box, yeah. but none of have really, cons uh, really uh, solidified anything, but there will be a fantastic prize for that tire, and that's gonna be running each and every month. So we're really excited for yeah. that. Uh, cannot thank you guys enough for tuning in tonight. And we are, we apologize for the delay in some of the shipments due to the federal holiday. Uh, moving forward, if we have a weird long weekend or something like that, we'll probably be shifting the schedule to a Friday tie. Yep. Um, but that's about it. Yeah. But yeah, so come hang out. If you're up in New England, come by the shop. Yeah. We're right on, the, uh, right on Route 1 in yep. Newbury. Can't miss us. We're the giant post fly sign. With a huge striper on the window. Huge striper on the window. Yep. Don't know how it got there. Just a weird Mag storm the other week. Magical stripers. Uh, Jumping all willy-nilly on the windows. Yep. But guys, come hang out. Come meet us. We love to meet all the members of the tribe. We've got a great little storefront here. Uh, and like I said, remember to use code TIEWITHPOSTFLY10 on postflybox.com, and you can get 10% off of fly tying kits, fly tying materials, fly tying tools. And let's do it. We're so excited for, for next week. What is next week's pattern? I think we're doing trout. No, we're doing uh, salt. Salt. We're up for we're salt. Gonna... We did trout, warm yep. water, and now we'll do a salt pattern coming so up. So we're going to do the, I think we're going to be doing the TNT bait fish, which has become a staple in all of our boxes up here at, in Newburyport, uh, up yeah. on the, I mean, for everything from largemouth and pike and pickerel in our little ponds and lakes, um, all the way out to super aggressive big striped bass out in the Atlantic Ocean. It's literally a craft fur peanut bunker. That's it. Yep. And those yep. are my two favorite saltwater streamer patterns. Yep. Styles. Again, super simple to tie. We'll be walking through it with you guys next week. Can't wait to see you guys there. Remember, on Sunday night, we'll be sending, we'll be announcing the kit that we're going to be tying the next week. And uh, we'll see you guys there. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great night, guys.